Hey everyone, welcome back to InfoGamer. In this video, we're going to be finishing up our Flappy Bird game playlist. And so we have this last video to do, and that's going to make 10 videos total on how to create Flappy Bird. So if you're just tuning in, I advise you to go back to the beginning of this playlist and work through it, because by the end, you're going to have a working Flappy Bird game. And the reason why we wanted to build Flappy Bird is because we actually built our own version of Flappy Bird. It had completely different art assets and our own version of the Flappy Bird code. And it's actually called Abyss Fish. You can download it on Android and iOS, and there will be a link in the description below. So if you want to try out our version of the game, go ahead and download it, play it, leave us a comment on what you thought, or even give our game a review. But let's get started with this last video for creating the basic Flappy Bird game. So in this video, we're going to be building the main menu for our Flappy Bird game. Right now, this is the scene that we have. We have our game scene. And so if I go ahead and hit play, so you can see that we have our bird. We have the ground that continues to move and it repeats itself. We also have a score a UI element. And if we click the screen, our bird starts flapping and we can dodge the pipes that spawn every so many seconds. And as we successfully make it through the pipes, we increment our score. And if we die, if we run into the ground or the pipes, we have a game over screen that pops up. So it's pretty awesome. Now for this main menu, what we want to do is we want to create a main menu that has the same style as our game. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the file, drop down menu, and then go save scene as. And then I'm going to go to our scene folder and let's rename this main menu. And the reason why I'm resaving our game scene as the main menu is because I want to use it as a template. And so essentially what we can do is we can go ahead and delete a lot of the functionality of our game in this scene. So let's go through each thing. We want to keep our camera. We want to keep our background. We want to keep our player, but we don't want to have the player functionality. And so let's select our player controller script and go ahead and select remove component. Then we'll select our ridge body because we actually don't need that. And our collider, because what we're going to do is we're going to have a play button. And when players click that play button, it's going to load the game scene and the game scene is going to have all this functionality on it. So let's go ahead and remove the circle collider. Now that should be good. Let's go to our death zone ground and we don't need the box collider for the ground. You could leave it because it's not hurting anything by leaving it, but let's go ahead and keep the movement script and the ground script attached to this because essentially we want it to look like the bird is flying but not flapping and that the ground is still moving and so when they load the game scene it's going to just remove the title and the play button and what other whatever other menu uh, elements we have so let's go now to our death zone sky and we can actually delete this object entirely Let's go to our ground spawn. We want to keep this because our ground script uses it to respawn each ground element when it goes off screen. That's how we continue to get a looping motion of the two ground sprites. So let's go to ground sprite two or ground zone two. We can remove the ground or the box collider, but let's keep the movement script and the ground script. Now let's go to the game controller script and we can remove this from, we can remove the game controller script from the game controller object. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to rename this to main menu controller, main menu controller. And we're going to create a new script and attach it to this object. And that script is going to control our main menu functionality. So now what we need to do is go to our pipe spawn and we can go ahead and delete this because 
we're not going to have any pipes spawn into the scene until we load the game scene. Now, we're going to keep the canvas, but we can go ahead and delete the score text and the score and the game over panel. We don't need the game over panel, except for let's actually redo that. Let's undo deleting that because what we want to do is we want to keep a panel and we're going to rename this panel to main menu panel. That way we don't have to create a whole new panel and reapply a lot of the same things. So we'll, let's keep game over title and text, but let's rename it to main menu text. And then, um, or main text and then main image. Now the replay button we can keep, but let's just call it play. And the main menu button we can delete because we don't need that. So right now, this main menu is going to be pretty simple. It's just going to have a title and a play button. If you wanted to add other features, maybe like a settings panel where you can toggle on and off the audio, which we actually don't have any audio. But if you wanted to figure out how to add audio to your game, you could add a pause, uh, like a, a mute button and then uh, a few other things you could do is you could have even like a high score uh, feature to your main menu. And those are all great options. We actually have a high score um, tutorial, how to add a high score tutorial or text to your main menu in our snake playlist. And so we might We'll add a link to the description below on how to create the snake main menu. And you can use that and implement it into your own main menu. But let's go ahead and start editing this now. What we want to do is select our main menu panel and we're gonna toggle it on because we want players to start with their title visible and the play button visible. So we have our main menu and now what we want to do is we want to change the image for our game over. And so if we go to our sprites and go to our sprite sheet, there should be a flappy bird. Yeah, right here. There's a flappy bird image for their title. And so if we select that and drag it into the source image, we now have our title. So that was pretty, that's pretty simple. We just clicked and dragged the Flappy Bird title into the source image. Now what we want to do is edit the play button. So I'm going to select the text uh, child object and let's type play. And I believe there should be a play button uh, image right here. So if you wanted to, you could delete your text child object, then go to your play button and drag this play button image into the source image. And then we have a play button. And if you wanted to rescale it a bit, so it was, so it's not so squashed vertically, you could do that. So that's pretty awesome. Now let's go and create the script to control our main menu. So I'm going to go to our scripts folder then click on create C sharp script and let's call this main menu controller. Let's go ahead and open it in Visual Studios. All right, so once you have it opened in Visual Studios, there's only a few things that we need to do. The first is to delete the, the start and update functions. The next thing that we want to do is add a new namespace and this is going to be using and then unity engine, unity engine dot scene management. So we added this previously, I believe to the game controller script. And so what we need to do now is create a public function for our play button. So let's call public void. And then we want to call it play button and then parentheses, curly braces, 
And there's only one line of code that we really need to call in this function. It's scene management or scene manager and then dot load scene. And then we need uh, parentheses and we need to pass the parameter for the scene index. And so when we add our scenes to the build settings, our main menu is going to be first, which makes it index zero. And then our game scene is going to be second, which is going to be index one. And so let's pass in a one for the game scene. And then we need a semicolon. So let's go ahead and save this. And what we need, okay. So let's go ahead and save this. And what we need to do now is go to our game controller script and find our load scenes. And so right here at the bottom of our script, we have our replay function and we set the time dot delta, uh, time dot time scale to one. And then we call our scene manager dot load scene and we load scene zero, which would be the main menu. But we don't want to call the main menu because our main menu is not replaying the game. That would be going back to the main menu. Instead, what we want to do is call our game scene. And since our main menu is going to be first and our game scene is going to be second, we need to pass in a one for the game scene index. Now what we need to do is create a return to main menu function for our main menu button on our game over panel because we didn't do that in the last video. So let's create a public void and let's call it main uh, main menu button or function parentheses curly braces inside this what we want to do is set the time dot time scale time time scale back to one not two one and then we want to call the scene manage manager dot load scene and then pass in a zero for the main menu scene end it with a semicolon and let's go ahead and save this let's make sure that all the scripts are saved by selecting the save all button and then let's go back to unity all right so once you're back in unity we need to first apply our main menu script to our main menu controller so i'm going to go ahead and select our main menu controller Go to our scripts folder, find our main menu, and drag it on to the inspector. Once it's in the inspector, we need to then click on our play button and assign our main our play button function. And to do this, I'm going to select our main menu controller, drag it into the on click field below run on, runtime only, then go to this no function drop down menu, go to main menu controller and play button. Now what we need to do is go ahead and save this scene. And then we want to, let's start by opening our project or our build settings. So file build settings, and then let's go to our scenes folder and drag in our main menu scene right above our scenes in build. So at the top, we want it to be above our game scene. So our main menu is index zero and our game scene is index one. Once you have that, let's go ahead and close that men, uh, menu. And then let's open our game scene and let's find our game over panel. So game over panel, let's expand that, select our main menu button and let's add a new on click function. So I click the plus sign and then let's select our game controller script, drag it into that same field and then go to the no function drop down menu, go to game controller and find, what did we call it? Main menu button. Once you have that, let's go ahead and save this scene and go back to our main menu scene. Now we can go ahead and play it and see how it works. So once you have it playing, you can see that the ground is still moving, which is just a cool feature that we wanted to keep in the main menu. Our bird is stationary, but once we hit play, it loads our game scene and nothing 
everything's changed. So it changed from our main menu scene to our game scene. So now we have all the functionality that we coded previously. So we have our scores uh, UI element. And as I click, I start flapping and I can dodge the pipes. When I die, I wait, game over appears and the main menu button should work now. So when I click main menu, it reloads back to the main menu. And if I click anywhere on the main menu, aside from the button, nothing happens. So our bird won't start flapping and pipes won't start spawning until I hit the play button. Then it's in the game scene and we can now click. And if I die, the other thing that we want to check is the replay button. So if I hit the replay button, it shouldn't go back to the main menu, but it should just reload the same scene. And it does. So that's awesome. So everything's working now. All right, so that's everything that we're going to cover in this video. Congratulations, you just finished your own version of Flappy Bird, at least the basic game mechanics. Now you're welcome to take this project and add to it. You can reskin it. You can add game functionality that you wish was in the original Flappy Bird game. You could even make your bird shoot missiles and blow up the pipes before they run into you. There's a lot of creative things that you can add to this project. Now, if this playlist was hard to follow along or if there was anything confusing, please leave us a comment or a question below this video or in any of the videos of this playlist on how we can improve and if you have any suggestions on what game you would like us to make next, please leave those in the comments below. Make sure that you like and subscribe this video, and we'll see you next time.